So uh, welcome today uh, to this uh, session uh, on unsupervised learning. So we are changing gears um, uh, from from the previous uh, weeks. Um, actually, there's three weeks left. So we are changing uh, the emphasis uh, from today to till the end, right? So um, <clears throat> the the objectives is um, to introduce uh, key concepts on unsupervised learning, and basically the three sort of uh, activities uh, that uh, we'll focus on are uh, uh, reflected there it is uh, um, a dimension reduction, uh, generation, and clustering. Um, and uh, well, we, we've seen some of these topics uh, a little bit before, uh, but uh, we'll cover today in somewhat more detail. Though the top, the the, the area is quite quite um, quite broad, uh, and therefore um, um, we'll we'll basically introduce the key ideas, and then you can you can check the the, the references uh, and the bibliography and the videos, etc. But uh, just to make a, a uh, so introduction, uh, we'll mention at some point uh, a principal component analysis, uh, encoders, uh, gener uh, generative adversarial networks, uh, TSNI, UMAP, K-means, uh, and mixer models. And I think maybe some others, right? Uh, as usual, uh, we, I'll, I'll give a, like, a, like a brief uh, conceptual introduction. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, Simon uh, or uh, Pablo and, and Eduardo uh, uh, will will introduce uh, a project in which they use uh, what is called bar bar variational uh, uh, variational uh, autoencoders. So that's a sort of uh, advanced or uh, advanced version of encoders that we'll will describe in a minute to generate interesting mo molecules uh, for drug discovery. So they use this models to suggest uh, new molecules that then, then can be tested uh, in the lab. So the material is basically um, at uh, ISLR 10, uh, uh, these two chapters in Bishop, uh, these two chapters in, in Goodfellow, and surely I'll alert the, the, the for, um, let's say, a more uh, computational approach. And this, this will be a, a, a based on a sort of uh, a shorter take of slides. There's a longer take of slides in, in, in there. OK. So uh, again, as, I, as we usually mention, be, besides this, there's a, there's a lab in, in R. And as I usually say, probably is more to be learned uh, by doing these ex exercises or practices uh, than by listening or, or reading the literature. Uh, and the lab is quite uh, broad. Um, we already did uh, some stuff uh, on earlier labs on, on unsupervised learning, but in this lab, we do uh, an example on matrix factorization. Sorry, I thought it was. No, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> let, let, let me, I'll go. I'll tell you. Uh, so uh, there's a PCA uh, versus Disney, UMAP, K-means, hierarchical clustering, and Gaussian mixtures. So um, as I said, we are changing gears. Uh, so uh, we are moving from supervised learning to unsupervised learning. And basically, we have no la labels now to predict at the moment. So we have only the access, right? Uh, and we have a, an input space, right? And we have some samples from from this that input it's put into in, input space and based on those samples we the, the difficult thing is we want to learn a model basically that's uh, trying to somehow get a a, a density uh, or a probability distribution over over x based on those data right so that's learning the model what learning in this case would be uh, sometimes if we want to infer some property uh, related with uh, that model or just in person property of, uh, about that model. Um, I don't know whether it's concentrated or whether it's, there is a number of, of, of groups uh, um, um, related with, with the model. With the, and uh, sometimes we also do uh, samples. We want to get samples, new samples. Actually, that was, um, uh, I mean, right now we are in the chat GPT uh, months. 
uh, in, in as far as artificial intelligence is concerned, uh, like um, let's say uh, like eight eight months ago, it, it was the, the, the it was the months of of uh, g generating through a sta stable diffusions. So that's a, a way to sample. Uh, that was basically a way to sample uh, essentially new new images. Okay, so the the, the core challenges now is that uh, uh, the feature space tends to be high. Uh, the properties of interest tend to be more complex than just par uh, parameter estimation. So it's, uh, let's say, a bit more abstract. And quite frequently, there's no direct error quantification measure. So we had before uh, uh, minimizing squared, squared errors or uh, minimizing cross entropy, et cetera. And in, in this case, it's not that that uh, that uh, that um, that obvious or that di direct. And uh, a little taxonomy. Uh, so um, uh, we mentioned already uh, density estimation. Manifold lear learning refers to uh, trying to reduce, basically reducing uh, um, um, uh, the dimension. So where do the data concentrate? Uh, so there's PCA, nonlinear PCA, and so on. Uh, finding modes and, group, and groups is also sometimes sufficient and, and relevant and, and important. And then sampling, as I as I mentioned. So these are some. Uh, I mean, so these are the sort of let's say the four main tax, uh, tasks and, and some examples of of methods. Uh, and of course, as I said, we are just giving a like a, um, a forty five. Minutes, so it's like some kind of a, a small gas board on 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 yeah. unsupervised learning. Okay, any questions for? So uh, we're going to do uh, um, a quick uh, 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 view on um, which is uh, from a dimension reduction to generation. So we're going to go go through a, a few examples. Uh, we uh, actually go through these uh, through all these uh, methods very briefly. So it's like. Uh, Someone wrote in the chat. Right. Okay. So. Uh, maybe with that click or. I see. You. Ah, oh. No, it's Pablo, but it's okay. Right. So, how do I get this out? Okay. Right. So, uh, <clears throat> as I said, uh, this we 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 give uh, key, key key ideas and uh, to to have some uh, of these methods. Um, so PCA we we saw the first day, but uh, we'll mention non-negative matrix factorization, Disney uh, and UMAP and out encoders, and then so this is basically a dimension reduction. Uh, this is more on generation, uh, and uh, let, let let me see. Let, let me mention that the, these three last methods are neural network based. So we, we keep on talking on on this deep learning uh, junk. Okay, so uh, the first one is a, a, a non-negative ma matrix factorization. Um, uh, as we mentioned, uh, most uh, methods, most methods in machine learning uh, have uh, some kind of probabilistic basis, but not all. And this is one of these uh, exceptions uh, that confirm the rule, right? Uh, uh, but as we said, uh, the, of those those uh, methods which were not so th that probabilistic, they, uh, with, with the with the with the time, people tended to uh, discover some kind of probabilistic uh, thing underlying, and that's the, that. This is the case of NMF. So it was introduced like a sort of um, a re apparently relevant and well, I mean quite relevant. Uh, uh, method from a mathematical point of view and a computational point of view, but uh, then later on, some people have found that it has some kind of probabilistic uh, interpretation. And the idea is we have a, a, a data matrix, so data matrix. So we have there's n n people and p variables, uh, n people and or n cases and p variables. Uh, and the idea is uh, we want to decompose this uh, this um, um, matrix 
uh, this matrix, this data matrix, as a product of, of uh, two matrices. One is n r n, n, n times r, and the other one is r, r times p. Uh, and uh, the w is a is a it's understood as a, as a matrix of of, of uh, weights, and this is a sort of uh, understood as a as a matrix of latent latent uh, um, latent variables, and the reduction it comes through this guy, through R, right? And the idea is that we want uh, this, uh, this uh, matrix to be quite close to, to X in a sense. So we, we, we can use uh, various distances. Uh, the two typical are uh, this, uh, uh, this distance, this quadratic distance uh, of um, a distance between two matrices, which is called in, in the case of matrices, it's called Frobenius, Frobenius norm. And another one which will appear or appears repeatedly in, in, uh, in uh, machine learning is some kind of uh, divergence. In this case, it's a Kullback Leibler uh, divergence, which is a distance between, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a divergence, it, it's a measure of the uh, difference of information between two probability uh, distributions. So it has this aspect and it appears in, in many. In many in many domains, so this is used uh, for uh, um, uh, dimension reduction. And uh, as I said, R is the, the key. The key so R should be smaller than P. So that's the, the key uh, parameter. And it's used in recommender systems. And it's also uh, we we use for example in a product uh, for for building communities in in social networks, which is uh, quite cool, right? And as I said, uh, this, uh, as an example, this uh, Kullback library, which uh, uh, a version, it, it can be actually viewed as a, a maximum likelihood likelihood estimation when the when the data come come from a, a Poisson Poisson distribution. Okay, so you can give that interpretation. Yeah. So in the previous slide, you said that it's approximating with wh looks like the structural equation scenario where we have a little bit yeah and yeah. there we minimize the observational covariance matrix with the model generated covariance matrix and see the covariance um, i guess that could be a third option right so i mean there's actually i, I just put two but there's many more and, and that, that might be a um a, um i mean I mean, it seems that we are just uh, uh, trying to um, approximate uh, to num I mean, to numbers. They, they, but actually, in their auto covariance, there's all, all the elements are involved. So, yeah, right. Yeah. So, as I said, I'm, I'm just giving a, a quick uh, <coughs> thing, and and I mean, just to give a, 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 a to to get a, a feeling of. Uh, so that would be the data. So these are is a supermarket. Uh, Mercadona is these are the uh, consumers, the buyers, and these are the products. So we, you have a, a huge. In, in, this is just to illustrate, uh, and and uh, we we make this the composition with uh, uh, two uh, columns, right? And we could think of uh, segments, right? So we are doing segmentation right now in in a in a project, right? So we could do we could think of these are uh, two segments of, of buyers, right? Um, we can give some interpretation like uh, how uh, important what, what are the weights of uh, I mean what imp uh, how important are these products for each of these segments, right? Um, <clears throat> how uh, these these numbers could be interpreted interpreted as how um, how uh, how much does this each uh, customer belong to each of the segments? So you can give uh, this kind of interpretations, right? Um, I mean, it's quite used in in marketing, for example. So uh, the next uh, quick uh, uh, overview is on TSNI, and that's uh, um, quite uh, useful for visualization, um, right? And the idea is that the same, uh, basically. We start from from a bunch of data, and then we're going to move uh, on a smaller dimension data. And the idea is that we are gonna we want this not to be uh, much separated from this. And that that's a sort of recurring recurrent idea in this uh, in in all these methods. 
Uh, and, and in this case, uh, I mean, we, we, we have to be uh, somewhat imaginative uh, with the divergence or, or the distance or the separation. Uh, and also, uh, I mean, the other uh, thing that we would need to dream of uh, or to invent is how do we transform this into this? So based on these two ideas, uh, there's lots of, there's lots of uh, well, I mean, quite many ideas or proposals. Uh, in this case, um, um, the, the emphasis in, in SNE and TSNE is basically um, that we want to preserve distances or topologies or whatever. So the distances between this, I don't know, this, this data and this data, or this data and this data, somehow need to be uh, uh, preserved between what, uh, the transforms, Y1 and Y2, or this one and this one from Y1 and, and Y1. And as well, other like topologies, neighborhoods, whatever. I mean, there's, there's a very clear several variants. <clears throat> so uh, basically, Disney comes from ESNI, right? So um, the idea is to convert. Uh, well, we use uh, uh, you use the the um, Euclidean distances, right? Uh, but then you make a softmax uh, transformation, so you you transform uh, the uh, this in into these uh, probabilities, right? Through a softmax, as, as I said. So the, the the key thing is this one, right? <clears throat> and the same with for the transform uh, data, right? Uh, and uh, so we we have this uh, distribution, right? And this distribution, and we want this to be close. So again. Uh, the, the sort of divergence that, that we use between these two distributions is is pullback library. You could use others, and that's what we that that's what they try to do. Okay, that's just, this is more uh, more or less computational uh, computational complex, etc. But that's that's the, the whole idea. Okay, so uh, Esni was. Uh, used for a while, but then uh, this TSNI was uh, became quite popular uh, because it gives uh, more. Uh, it's more efficient, and it's also it has some nicer properties. So uh, the the first thing is uh, the first thing is uh, they do um, um, they do a, a symmetric. Um, uh, they symmetrize the the the. This the well, the probabilities or the distances, right? First thing, and then <clears throat> rather than using uh, this, uh, which is related with uh, um, uh, a Gaussian, the Gaussian distribution, the, the normal distribution, so they use a, a T student, and the T student uh, kernel or the T student distribution is more robust, uh, more robust than than the um, so it has heavier tails than the Gaussian, and therefore it works it tends to work better. So that's a, a kind of example, a little example. Uh, if, if you if you plan to use it, or if you want to really uh, use it, uh, um, so that's the, 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 these are all the things or tricks uh, that need to be done in, in practice. Uh, and uh, this is a sort of typical example. So you want to separate, uh, I mean, some data based on on, on principal components analysis, um, and then. If you if you use the the two first uh, the, the first and the second uh, component the picture is kind of um, mixed right but it's it's quite typical that uh, you get uh, like much better separated uh, uh, visualizations with with the Disney the Disney right uh, and a, sim a similar idea is uh, is with UMAP. Uh, UMAP is more recent. Uh, um, UMAP is uniform manifold approximation and projections, right? Uh, an intro is here, and this is a, the original paper, but it's more under, uh, understandable here, right? If you want to read. And the idea is, qu is quite similar. Uh, the only thing is that uh, at some point, well, they, they, they want to preserve uh, 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 neighbors, right? That's the. No, it's not just distances, but if I'm if I'm uh, if I, I want to be clear, clear um, if I if in the original 
Uh, it is, it, at one point, is close to um, the points in the neighborhood uh, in the transformation that you want to, to give it. And then they, well, they, they get some kind of graph, right? And then they falsify the graph in, as in classic set theory. So shame on them, right? Uh, and then um, find out. Distribution. But the, the idea is more or less the same, but well, we have they have this idea of, of graph and then pacifying to make uh, things a bit more efficient. Okay, <clears throat> so um, we still keep on working on on or talking on uh, on dim dimension reduction, and we do autoencoders. Uh, we will do uh, um, um, an example afterwards. Uh, and here's the whole thing. Uh, actually, we we have used this. I mean, we we talk uh, about this uh, uh, before, like we we talked the other day on on um, transformers, right? So we had a, a pile of uh, encoders and a pile of decoders, and the idea is expressed here. So we have um, something, some data that we are interested in. Uh, then we get some a, a compressed uh, version of that, right? Uh, something like this, and we have seen this uh, already. Um, for example, the embedding uh, can be the embeddings that we talk about uh, can be interpreted as well uh, in in this in this uh, vein, uh, and um, then we decode it. Uh, so that there's a, a transformation, the inverse kind of inverse transformation, and we want to recover uh, reconstruct the, the, the input, right? Uh, these can be used, I don't know, to the noise, etc. But uh, uh, for us, I mean, it, this is used for, for for a few things. But for us, uh, for this discussion, is uh, the most important thing is the, the the compressed representation. But then you can use it for other for other stuff. One one, uh, as I said, one could be a a, a smooth one. Uh, and um, uh, so basically, we do all this exercise. Uh, this is typically using a neural network, and this is another neural network. But then uh, what we are interested in is in this transformation because we use it for other stuff. OK, so that's an example that we did. Uh, so these were like images of not much quality. And then with this, we tend to smooth. These are pictures of, of clothes, right? So that's, this is uh, browsers and, and, and sneakers. OK, and we, we use this to, to smooth, for example. That's one possible use. So the idea is um, we start with this, uh, with this, with the data, right? And we um, um, get this hidden representation through uh, uh, an encoder. And then we get, um, uh, we recover, um, um, we, we reconstruct it. And we reconstruct the, this uh, based on with a, with a decoder. And the idea is that, that we want this to be quite, we, we want to be close. So the output in this case is the input, right? So this is again unsupervised, or if you want semi-supervised, uh, and that's, that's that, but the risk is, is, is quite similar. So input, uh, we want the, uh, uh, the output to be close to the, to the input, right? And we use, um, the same. Uh, we have some loss. We have the uh, encode. Uh, that's the encoder and the decode, uh, decoder. And we there is a loss, right? And then same story that we have been uh, talking for a while for the last two three weeks. So we sample of mini batches. Uh, we've um, um, we do a forward pass to get the loss to assess the loss, and then we do a backward uh, pass to to us. Uh, um, Estimate the gradients and update, etc. The same story. Nothing super new. I mean, yeah. The only thing is that I mean, the exotic thing is that the, uh, this uh, uh, this should be close to the original data. Uh, so if you if you do in the, in the in the media part, uh, you have less. Uh, uh, you force it to to have a smaller dimension, then you hope to uh, capture the more relevant data features. So do you do this, you do this in the hope? Um, uh, hence, uh, when the decoder is linear and uh, the loss is uh, is uh, is a, a mean square error, you actually recover uh, principal uh, component analysis. 
But then uh, when F and G are nonlinear, for example, neural networks, then uh, you, you get a, a you, you get what, what is this, which is a nonlinear non generalization of principal component analysis. So that's an example of the with a three with with two with two um with, with, with a sort of classical example and a comparison of the kind of pictures that you get when separating PCA and 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 and, and out encoder. Okay. Uh, you you get regularization examples. Uh, another uh, important concept we we have little time available uh, but uh, we'll do this um we'll do this in the in the sort of base and continuation of this uh, actually we we have seen this one like stack out encoder so uh, um we, we put a pile of of this and basically what we get is our i mean we with the first uh, out encoder you uh, of the first uh, um, um encoder uh, you get some you you hope to get some uh, features if you put more you get more 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 abstract features so that's and, and we've seen if you remember we we see the, we we use this uh, we saw this with uh, transformers and the other thing uh, which is uh, important and that's what we'll we talk is on stochastic, uh, stochastic encoder so this uh, uh, i mean rather than this uh, uh, let, let's say that the, 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 the deterministic function we 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 get a probabilistic thing Right, so the encoding and decoding are distributions, uh, and this uh, goes into uh, um, um, the business of uh, variational autoencoders. Right? So, uh, base uh, uh, variational autoencoders uh, somehow um, are. I mean, we're changing gears from from uh, the, uh, dimension reduction to generation, and that's uh, what uh, Eduardo will illustrate in a minute. Uh, so here we we wanted to sort of uh, move from yeah, some data to recover those the data in the hope that this uh, is useful for something else. So we we get the essential features, uh, basically what we've been doing. And in this case, uh, what we want now in, in generation is given the data, we want to generate new data that we haven't seen before uh, in, with this kind of idea. And the idea is that <clears throat> the basic idea is we this is like a probabilistic so rather than this uh, fixed or the determ determ deterministic uh, latent vector uh, we we, we get some let's say mean vector and some standard deviations right so is uh, there's a some probabilistic element here and then there's a probabilistic element and so this this image is uh, different or slightly different but similar to to the other one right so that, that's the sort of uh, basic idea and if you if you do all this uh, probabilistic um uh, probabilistic um computations or games or or manipulations in a bayesian manner um because the, uh, with, with a bayesian interpretation with uh, these neural networks this gets uh, quite involved uh, computationally so to to compute uh, the posteriors you need to do actually use a variational base and that's why this is called variational uh, variational autoencoders and that we will see um, in the in the follow-up of this we will we'll see in, in 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 quite a bit of detail right any comments or and and, and eduardo will present a project he's involved in uh, which uses these ideas uh, to generate new new molecules. So in, in his domain would be, there's a bunch of molecules that uh, we have, uh, there's some properties, with some properties that we want to reproduce. And based on that, we generate new molecules, uh, which we, we couldn't think of uh, before, in the hope of doing, uh, in the hope that these will have uh, some good properties. So that, uh, that's a basic message. Okay, that's, that's it. Yeah, so uh, the next one is, uh, so, um, I mean, this kind of problem, as I said, uh, like eight months ago, we, we as I said, uh, we were in chat, we are in chat GPT uh, or, or transformer months, like uh, eight months ago, we, we were in this uh, domain. I mean, that was uh, quite popular, uh, like, um, I don't know, 20, well, let's say 32 months ago, 
it was the it, these were the months of of gangs, right? These are generative uh, adversarial networks, and again, that's a, a generation method. Uh, I will I will will, will uh, pretty quickly. Uh, basically, the same problem. We want to generate new data, uh, and um, uh, basically, it's a we we use. Uh, we use it, it's a kind of game. So, well, it, it, it's not a kind of game. It's a game, and between a couple of of uh, of two um, uh, neural networks. So, so there's a discriminator which needs to recognize whether these whether the uh, uh, um, whether the um, images uh, are real or come from or are generated uh, artificially. So, uh, so there's a, a, a discriminator and a generator. And this uh, kind of compete, uh, this tries to determine which are actual uh, images or or no, or or or, or uh, generated uh, fake images, right? And then there is a ba basically uh, there's a competition. Uh, there's a uh, the generator is a neural network with uh, some parameters. Uh, discriminator is a neural network, and they have um, a reverse uh, reverse. Uh, I mean, they have um uh, well um uh, they have um what, what i mean the loss of one is the negative of one so this a uh, zero sum uh, uh game and basically in this case uh, we am at computing Nash equilibria and that's it so uh we have seen uh we have quickly really gone through um uh, dimension reduction uh, generation. The last part is uh, clustering, and that this is um, this is also um, a zoo. There's lots of animals in this zoo. Uh, I'm just giving like very f fast ideas on on three or four things, right? Again, um, <clears throat> uh, they, this is uh, very important in marketing, uh, natural sciences, social sciences, etc. We are Again, doing, uh, for example, a, a, a project on on anthropology at the moment, and and these are quite quite relevant. I mean, these kind of moments. Well, some of these ones, not not the ones that we are going to mention. This is super important for um, uh, for the social sciences and humanities. Uh, basically, it's trying to it's uh, it's called probabilistic topic modeling and latent usually allocation models. And for example, um, uh, Chema does this with uh, tweeters in trying to find out uh, misinformation sources or who yeah that, that kind of thing, right? In in his case, it's, it's a little bit more complicated because the tweeters are just uh, 100 words or some 100 uh, characters, right? Or, yeah. And here you you have uh, um, um, I mean you, you you use basically this uh, kind of thing to find out uh, the topics that characterize uh, uh, a text, a paper in uh, analysis or in, in in genomics or whatever. Uh, and the idea is that uh, each topic is a distribution of words. Each topic is a mixture over the corpus topics, and then it's where it's, uh, it's where it's sampled from such topics. Uh, and the idea is to come out uh, with clusters of. I mean, you have a bunch of of uh, of um, of um, of uh, texts, right? And you want to cluster them uh, in according to what they say, right? In this case, uh, you could you could try to say. We, we we capture Twitter tweets with uh, which are fake news and other which are not. So we 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 you try to to characterize which are the words and which are the topics of, of, of fake news related uh, tweets. For example, That's, that would be the sort of uh, topic. Yeah. So um, the basic ingredient in most of this is uh, just a, a proximity matrix. So. Uh, one uh, one data and one data, one text and another text, or one uh, monkey and another monkey. How how close they are, right? Uh, I mean, you you tend to to like uh, symmetric, so you can symmetrize uh, like this. 
And then uh, you have a, a universe of uh, uh, similarities or dist uh, distances or similarities, right? Uh, you have a few here, but there's tons of them, right? And then basically, uh, the, the, there's two types of, of uh, algorithms, uh, combinatorial and combinatorial uh, methods, which basically have no underlying probabilistic uh, elements. And you have mixer models, <coughs> which uh, have an underlying probabilistic uh, model, right? Um, personally, I tend to prefer this um, for various reasons. And the sort of holy grail of combinatorial methods are k-means, which is well known. So I just uh, so basically um, um, uh, you have uh, uh, k groups, uh, and you uh, I mean you want k groups, sorry, uh, and uh, you you partition the data in these k groups, and you get a, a, you want to minimize the basically you want um, each, uh, if, if you assign, I mean, the concept is you, if you assign a data to a group, uh, you want it to be uh, in such a way that the, uh, the data in, in each group are quite close between them. And then the, the groups are uh, uh, as separated as possible, right? So uh, you end up with, uh, by solving uh, um, combi uh, this type of combinatorial, like, uh, uh, um, Problems uh, uh, because of this, uh, you you use heuristics, and one which is well known but leads to is it's it's uh, it's the is this one right? Okay, and these are exam. Uh, this is one example in which we use three three. Uh, so initially we we. Uh, this uh, the the data are assigned to uh, randomly to each of the the three um, um, groups, um, and then uh, we um, we well we iterate uh, in in such a way. Uh, uh, I, as as I mentioned, we we end up with uh, in in local optima, so the same with different initializations of leads to. Uh, uh, somewhat different uh, uh, results. So this means that we need to um, we need to um, repeat or, or re restart uh, from various initial initializations. Uh, and also the the result uh, the results depends on on the number of of of, um, of clusters. Right. So if you use two or three or four. The, the, the clusters might change quite a bit, right? Or more, right? Uh, one, uh, I mean, sort so, so, uh, a, a crucial hyperparameter would be the number of, of, of clusters. And sometimes uh, they are given in, in marketing that this is quite typical. typical. And some other, other cases uh, we, we, um, we discover sequ sequentially uh, in, in by observing the uh, reduction in the ob objective function, which was before. And this is called an elbow graph, basically, because it's an elbow. When you see the this elbow, uh, this is the time to, to stop. Uh, and uh, actually, and that's one of the reasons, uh, that's one of the reasons which why I prefer mixer models is because uh, you, you have uh, ways to, uh, you have um, um, ways to find the, um, most likely uh, number of clusters in, in a probabilistic model. So that's that's why I, I tend to prefer this. So um, uh, another example of a combinatorial approach are hier hier hierarchical. So that's also uh, quite well known. Um, you can have a, a aggregative or disaggregative uh, methods. So basically, aggregative means that you uh, start with, I mean, if you have n data, you start with uh, n clusters, each one of size one, and then you uh, find out which one, I mean, you find the distances between uh, uh, each pair of cluster in this case, uh, and then you aggregate the, 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 the two clusters which are closer. So 
and then to to this uh, new cluster, you you the represent, representative is, for example, the the centroid, right? And then you repeat until okay. And then uh, depending on, I mean, the 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 issue then is what is the distance between two clusters depending on the the type of distance, maximum, minimum, etc. And then you have period variants of these ag 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 aggregative uh, approach approaches. And and the thing is, then you you can you can represent uh, these uh, um, as uh, as these uh, these trees, right? Uh, of course, uh, the trees will depend on the the distance that you use. But this is some sometimes quite. Uh, um, um uh, suggestive for uh, the scientist uh, that you are supporting right so sometimes i don't know uh, i decide that i can i can cut in this uh in this form right so this i mean this will be one cluster and all these guys will be another cluster and uh, this cluster and i sometimes have the capability or the inventive of uh uh, giving an interpretation, and this is quite uh, suggestive for for in, in in several areas of science. Can I ask a question? Sure. For a, so if you're working in an interdisciplinary group with uh, clients from a very different domain, how, when do we tell them that is it better to do clustering on the raw data or must we do dimension reduction first and then do clustering? Um, Basically, uh, well, that, that's a sort of very broad question that, um, um, I mean, normally the, uh, this initial uh, playing with the data to reduce dimensions, blah, 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 this is very boring for them, right? So you, you should do it uh, before going to the second meeting. Uh, and then, I mean, if you, you find out uh, that uh, you can work with the, uh, with, um, um, I mean, uh, the thing is, uh, will they? I mean, if you if you if you reduce the dimensions, maybe you lose interpretability, right? Uh, and if they demand interpretability, then you shouldn't reduce the. But if you decide that, uh, I mean, you this is, I mean, you, you do it on back at home, and then at this next meeting you do it. Um, yeah, and then mixer models. That's uh, I like. I like them quite a lot, <clears throat> uh, and and many many phenomena uh, f follow mixers. So <clears throat> so normally in statistics context, we 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 use we talk about this this guy right. Uh, so that's a that would be a, like a a, a normal. Distribution, but in many problems, the, the populations are heterogeneous. So it's a some kind of combination between this population, this population, or this population, right? For example, the in, in the campus, the heights of uh, men and women uh, they will not follow uh, one distribution like this, but it's, it would be more something like this, right? No, no gender balance. Uh, whatever, okay. And, and in, in many phenomena, um, um, so so there's there's like mountains in the data, right? So like electricity usage during the day. Early in the morning, people use a lot. In the evening, they use a lot, and in the middle, yeah, less. For example, yeah. Um, and I mean, there's lots of it. I, I, I we've done quite a few examples, and it was basically mixtures. So that's that's uh, and and the idea is that we want to uh, we want to learn the number of mountains, right? Here it's quite apparent that there's three, but so sometimes it's not so obvious. So we want to learn this. That's uh, uh, learning the number of clusters in a automatic way, in a sort of um, 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 well-founded way. Uh, we want to know the the weights, the sizes of each. Of, of, of each of these uh, clusters and the parameters of, of, of each of these uh, mountains. So that's in, in one dimension, but in two dimensions, it's something like this, right? And in three dimensions, 
So lots of things of, uh, um, um, I mean, in lots of uh, geographic phenomena, you can use clusters. Um, so it's it's quite it's quite um, they're quite 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 useful and quite powerful. So uh, a typical, I mean, sort of basic. Uh, 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 basic, um, I mean, the initial, uh, because the Gaussian is uh, very easy to, to, to handle and to make, you can, you can do many computations by hand you know, or in, in, in paper and, and, and pen. Uh, so you use uh, Gaussians, right? Um, and the idea, so that the model would be uh, the um, um, the data comes from uh, I mean given the given the the labels the data comes from a from a, from a normal <clears throat> the labels come from a uh, let, let, to start with uh, let's say uh, uh, with one, uh, with probability one k comes from um, group one etc and then the means uh, come from a sort of common common population right. And the idea that, that that's not the most general version, but again, we, we can put a, another uh, another distribution here. But the idea is that we put a joint uh, the joint model like this, and the idea is that we want to learn um, well. We, we want to learn the uh, the parameters. Um, yeah. So the thing is is uh, we want to make um, the the idea is that we want to make the we get the distribution of the of the um, labels given the data, and the problem is that this is uh, very difficult to handle, and we you need uh, tools that we'll see uh, later on, I mean, in a few weeks. And the other possibility is uh, to do maximum likelihood, and for this, uh, there's a super popular uh, and very important to know if you have time, which is the expectation maximization algorithm. Uh, and now we move to Eduardo. You have to copy it here. Or? Uh, yeah, you have the Right. So. Here, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Control the. Uh, I sort of forget. Yeah. 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 Is this working? Oh, wait. Let me try. Okay. No. Go for it. Okay. Try just. Try with this one. With the two yeah. keys. Okay. This. Okay. Um, so I was going to talk about um, an application of variational open colors. Um, how can they be used into uh, well to help um, molecular design? Um, so right now we have a big problem, uh, which is uh, the Alzheimer's uh, disease. Which is a neurodegenerative uh, disease uh, that has no treatment. Um, there are some uh, palliative measures that we can take, but we don't really have any kind of cure for it. So, uh, since it affects quite a lot of people and uh, its symptoms are quite bad, um, it's uh, interesting to try to find molecules to uh, to treat it. So. Our, object, uh, our objective is to design new drugs uh, with some desired properties that should be uh, um, that we, we would like to uh, um, uh, measure um, with some quantities of uh, values. Uh, also, we would like them to not be toxic 
Uh, so in order to explore that kind of design, uh, we may use variational looking colors, uh, as well as other kind of uh, more complex techniques like diffusion models or genetic, genetic algorithms. Uh, but we will uh, focus on variational open colors with this presentation. Um, so, first, we should talk about the kind of data that we are working with. Uh, molecules, uh, there are different ways to represent them. Uh, what we use are the, uh, the SMILES codes. Uh, the SMILES are um, string, uh, string representations of characters. Um, which uniquely uh, well, well, which define um, well, which determine the the molecule. So basically, if you have the smiles code, you know the molecule, and if you know the molecule, you can get the smiles code. Um, and we have a few data sets of um, of molecules with their uh, smiles codes. Uh, the two that we use are the MVL, which is a huge public database of bioactive molecules. It has 2 million molecules. Then we also have a custom data set with molecules that are uh, somewhat useful for treating uh, Alzheimer's, uh, which would be our problem of interest. Um, so, so, so uh, where is the PML uh, value? Oh. Yeah, of course. So um, the PK, P, K, K, can be all value. It's a property that is assigned to each molecule. Um, it's a way to, uh, to more or less order how good they are against um, some specific uh, property of, of, of treating Alzheimer. Um, so in our case, our custom data set is quite small uh, as as we can only measure this value for low amounts of, of molecules. We, we don't have the resources to do it for every single molecule. Um, but um, the idea is that Cambial is just smiles codes. Our custom data set is smiles codes and, their, uh, and, their, and our desired property, which is a number for for Every molecule, even number. So uh, first, we need to talk about how we pre-process our data. Um, the idea is to use one whole encoding. So um, what we do is we first define a vocabulary of characters, which would be these characters here. It's about like 30, uh, 30 different characters, more or less. And what we do is that. Uh, once we get the string, uh, well, the smiles code for a molecule, we will encode every single uh, character as a vector of zeros and ones uh, based on our uh, on the position in the vocabulary. So that way we can transform a smiles code into a matrix which we can operate on and apply uh, into uh, neural networks. So, um, various open colors. Uh, the idea behind an open color, of course, is to um, first input some kind of data, in our case, is uh, the molecules, and then uh, learn some way of encoding it, and then being able to decode it. So, this would be just um, traditional auto color, um, where our loss function is some kind of reconstruction error uh, where we would like to get the same molecule as, uh, as uh, the molecule that we inputted. Uh, however, um, it's more interesting for our kind of problem to add a variational component to this bottleneck here. Uh, and the way we do that uh, is uh, how we define the variational thing colors, which is that uh, instead of having an encoder that um, makes a numerical encoding of the of of our molecule, it will it will uh, give up two vectors, two different numerical vectors, which will be a mean and a variance, 
And what we'll do then is um, sample uh, from a normal distribution following those vectors. And that, that, um, that sample is what we will feed the decoder. Uh, so what happens here is that once you input a molecule, you're not uh, guaranteed to get the same molecule. You will get uh, similar molecules. And in order to make uh, all this work, we must uh, change a bit uh, how the loss functions work. Um, what we did is that on top of having a reconstruction uh, uh, error, uh, we will also um, add a loss function on the uh, late, uh, latent space uh, that we create. And that is uh, uh, using uh, KL divergence. So we would like our latent space to have uh, to be somewhat similar to a normal distribution of uh, zero, well, normal zero and one normal distribution. Um, so the idea is that um, by combining these two uh, loss functions into a, into a single one, uh, we may get um, a um, model capable of uh, generating molecules that are, uh, have similar structures to ones in our data set. And also the latent space will be, uh, should be smooth in a way that we can actually uh, travel or make some kind of optimizations inside um, in order to find good encodings for, for molecules. Um, so normally the most basic kind of color uh, you can define is uh, using dense networks for encoders and decoders. Uh, however, in our case, we, we, we can use uh, more complex architectures that are uh, better for our kind of data. So I'm going to talk about uh, what SAP has, uh, well, the, about the shape of our encoder and the shape of our decoder. So uh, in our case, uh, it happens that smiles codes are highly locally dependent. So this means that um, characters, uh, nearby characters have a lot of uh, information shared between them uh, with respect to faraway characters. So that's why uh, our, the first layers of our encoder are uh, one dimensional convolutional networks. And then we can combine some of them and end up with uh, adding at the end fully connected networks, uh, which will of course give us two values: the mean uh, vector and the, and the uh, standard well and the standard deviation error um, vector. Um, so yeah, this this would be how we would encode uh, our molecules. We would get our molecule one how to encode it, encode it and then uh, pass it through the encoder. And then once we have that and we sample from a normal that follows a mean and a standard uh, deviation uh, given by the encoder, we would like to be able to decode it in, uh, into a string of characters representing uh, a molecule, yeah. So for that, we use recurrent neural networks and the reason why we do that is because uh, when you're um, generating a smile scroll, once you've uh, written a few characters, the next character that you should be outputting is highly dependent on the ones that you've already, uh, of the, you have already written. Um, so that's why, uh, that's why recurrent neural networks are uh, pretty useful in this case. Uh, in our model, uh, the inputs to the uh, neural network are always the same because we only have one encoding for, for a given molecule. Um, the rest would be fairly standard. Uh, it's why the outputs uh, it's um, a character. So it will, it will output a vector uh, and we will take the maximum number 
uh, of, of that vector to know. Uh, so in order to know um, uh, which which characters classify to be. Um, so yeah, it, it will output some character and then it will use the information of that character it has outputted and then again, the, the encoding will output the next, and then it will just read uh, until it was ended. Uh, so that's how we would decode um, some kind of numerical encoding into, into our uh, smiles code. Um, so having those tools, we had uh, a third uh, a third idea to to the variational open color model, which is a property prediction model, uh, which is which it will be just a fully connected uh, layer that it will be connected to the latent space, and it will try to predict in our case our uh, p QVL uh, values, which is our property of interest. Um, so the idea is that we will all we will train this model as a whole. So now instead of having two lots functions combined, which are the reconstruction function and the KL divergence, we will have a third one, uh, which is the, uh, which is how accurate the property uh, factor is. Um, the, idea was, well, the idea why this is useful is because um, adding this third component uh changes the latent space so that um it models the latent space so that it's quite adequate uh, for predicting this property which is uh basically what we want um and it allows to make uh, it allows us to make um um it makes it for us uh, very easy to make uh, optimizations that will leave us with uh, good molecules. So the idea is that once we have a uh, well-defined latent space, and uh, knowing uh, having a model for the property for the property that we desire, uh, we can apply uh, optimization algorithms such as the, the such as Bayesian Bayesian optimizations uh, in order to uh, travel through this latent space. And get encodings that have uh, good values for those for those properties, um, and later, once we know those good encodings, we can decode them into uh, good molecules. Um, yeah. So uh, this approach has some some limitations. Uh, this approach was. Uh, What's was published uh, around five years ago, more or less, uh, which in, in times of, in, in the time scale of uh, machine learning, that's uh, a long time ago. Um, so it introduced uh, really interesting ideas, but it has some big problems uh, that can be solved with newer, with newer, uh, frameworks or approaches. Uh, so the first one is that it needs huge data sets and we don't always get to have that. In our case, our data set is quite small and the problem is quite complex. So, so, so that's, that's the first big problem. Uh, the second problem is that um, this uh, model only understands molecules as a sequence of characters. However, molecules have uh, um, deep, have have uh, structures that um, that follow uh, that are deeply related, um, and in general, not accounting for this graph-like structure is a huge problem, um, since the well, the shape the shape of the geometry of the molecules is quite important. Um, so that, that's a second big limitation. And the third one, uh, is the, um, it's in part due to the smiles encoding, uh, which, um, so the problem is that 
smiles, uh, smiles codes um, are generally easily readable, but the problem is that uh, similar smiles code uh, smiles codes may uh, if you if you change some letters, it may create um, invalid uh, chemically invalid molecules. Um, so what we see in this uh, in this graph is representations of the latent space of some variational in color, and the uh, blue parts are uh, molecules that once decoded uh, are uh, chemically invalid, and the green parts are uh, ones that are actually valid. So we can see that there's uh, a big problem where we generate lots of molecules that are actually not useful at all. Uh, for that, we can use other kinds of uh, of of uh, codes for the for um, for the molecules. One of them is would be selfies, uh, which in our in in the case of variational alkene colors doesn't generate uh, chemically invalid um, uh, molecules. However, it also has some added problems. Uh, but yeah, the the three main ideas is we don't have enough data. And the model needs a lot of data. The model doesn't understand the graph-like structure of, of these uh, of our molecules. Uh, also, we tend to generate molecules that are actually not real, not, well, not valid. Uh, for that, we have other more recent models that have uh, improved a lot on, on this problem. So just to show uh, two examples, one would be the junction tree variation in, out in color, which actually does use the graph-like structure of molecules. Um, turning it, it, it employs both uh, the the um, the smile scope for the molecules, but it also uses up uh, it also simplifies its structures um, and well doesn't kind of on its uh, more imp most important substructure. So so it can. Uh, learn about the information that all the substructures inside the molecules uh, may give. Um, that would be one example. And another example would be uh, optimizing uh, our colleges in reinforcement learning. Um, and here, the general idea is that uh, you could navigate uh, this, this uh, latent space uh, with a better approach using well, reinforcement learning models. Uh, through through uh, through the fine agent and a, and a critic, uh, which is a, again a predictive model for our um, desired property. So the idea is that um, the real idea is that very small between colors um, are actually a quite useful family of methods that allow us to explore the. Uh, the vast uh, space of, of possible molecules um, uh, in a fairly intelligent manner, so as to create uh, molecules that are uh, useful to us uh, and are at the same time somewhat different to the ones that we already have. Um, also, uh, one um, big advantage of this kind of models is that once you generate new molecules, you can uh, study the, their chemistry and then uh, reintroduce them in our in the data sets so the model can be continuously refined. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the model that I, that I showed has uh, some key limitations that uh, no techniques techniques are able to uh, improve on. Uh, the, Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, can I make a question? Yeah. Um, the, so, you use a one hot encoding, right? Yeah. Um, but it, this tends to be too sparse and very large dimensional, etc. Yeah. Uh, have you tried uh, uh, embedding? Like, uh, uh, that's something embedding. that we haven't tried yet. But, uh, yeah, that, that's something that, that can be. Somewhat easily done, yeah. Uh, using modern embeddings for molecules, yeah. Which, of course, it could improve the the learning of the model since it's not as since it defines a space that's not as sparse, yeah. Thank you. 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 Th
but we haven't yet. <laughs> Right at the beginning, you said looking for newer properties or improvements, mm -hmm. and then but not introducing a toxic like non-toxic. Yeah. Press in the slide. Where did you so, define it? So, um, in what I have shown, uh, we haven't introduced the, the toxic toxicity variable, but the idea would be fairly. Uh, it would be more or less the same. You would add to the desired properties uh, the toxicity, and you would try to, in this case, instead of maximize, you would want to minimize it or get it to zero. And we do actually have some models that calculate can calculate uh, toxicity based on our mo uh, molecule. Though uh, we haven't, uh, I to this uh, particular uh, application yet. Yeah, the, the focus was on generating the, but they have this. Uh, yeah, because in real life, the, the the space of unintended consequences is very much unknown. Yeah, yeah anything can go wrong. In in this particular model, you can actually do it if you if you have it in your database. If you have information about the toxicity, you can perform Bayesian optimization in order to get as as small toxicity as you as you can. So you among, can actually among known toxicity, but the space of unknown no, toxicity. No. Yeah, you you try to explore the latent space into a new region, on which you can expect to have uh, molecules with lower toxicity. Then you have to have a measure uh, a method to measure that toxicity as well. But it, actually, in this in this particular work, they do multi-objective uh, optimization, so that uh, they actually reduce toxicity, augment uh, solubility, and another property which I cannot remember, and you optimize the three of them at the same time. So that's the optimization part of this, this model. Uh, it's a, actually you, you don't optimize them at the same time because they are uh, they are conflicting objectives. So that you yeah. optimize a, a weighted combination of yeah exactly yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, any other questions? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, thank thank you. you. Thanks. Okay, so next week we have uh, reinforcement learning next year, and we finish. Well, almost finished.